Welcome to this Excel video. Once again, we're going to be looking at applications of VBA. VBA is an object-oriented programming language. And so what you can do is interact with objects. The question is, what is an object? Well, it can be lots of things. Two examples for you are that a cell is an object, such as G3, and also The shape is an object, and so we can interact with the cell and that shape using VBA. Let's say we're selecting cell G3. We can change the color of cell G3 with a single line of code in VBA. That line of code can be written in different ways, but the outcome is the same. The first way is using an index for colors. So I'm going to run this procedure by clicking somewhere inside the code and up on the toolbar I'm going to hit the play button. What happened is that cell G3 turned red. This is the line of code that did that. Sheet 4 dot range G3. So that specified the object and from this point onwards to the right this specifies the properties that we're going to interact with. So the shade of the interior of the cell as opposed to the border and the color index is 3. If I change that color index to 5, let's see what happens when we run that procedure again. It now goes blue. And 9, it now goes a, a burgundy type color. I'm going to put an apostrophe in front of that line of code. When I do that, the text will turn green meaning that it will not run anymore because VBA editor sees that as comments and not code. If I take the apostrophe away from this line underneath we can see that we've got now a line of code that's going to be uh, running in a slightly different way selects the object in the same way but instead of doing color index it does color with RGB code so 25500 let's see what color that gives us it gives us red and if I change that to something else and run it it's different again so colors can be referred to in a few different ways there are two ways and I've got a table here that explains some of the basics of uh, what RGB colors and the color indexes are. This link here will take you to a page that describes it in great detail. If I right click on the cell and choose format cells, we go to the fill tab and we click on more colors. What we can see here is the RGB color of our current selection. And so I can change that and we'll see that color change. So if you've already got a particular color in your cell and you're trying to find out what the RGB color is, that's the way that you can do it. Go into the Format Cells box and check out the RGB, make a note of it. The shape, we could change the color by right clicking on it, choosing Format Shape. Inside Fill, we could choose anything we like, such as green. And so what we've just done manually is change the fill property of the shape. If I click on the shape, it's currently called something boring called rectangle one. Why don't I type our new shape in the name box? And Excel will keep that name for that shape unless we change it. If we go to our code box, and look at the second procedure we've got here. If I type our new shape, then what's going to happen is that the first line of code selects that shape, and the second line of code fills that color in using the same RGB method that we saw above. 
So let's click inside the procedure and click the play button. And so 25500 turns it red. Those two quick examples demonstrate how the properties of objects can be changed with VBA. The next three sheets I'm going to show you applications of what I've just demonstrated using cell shading and shape shading to accomplish a task. Let's look at this first example. I have placed a shape on top of this particular body diagram in a variety of different places. We've got anterior shoulder right and left, right quad, right knee, left knee, left hamstring, left calf. You could have a number of different shapes but I've just chosen some. And over here in column M I've described what the shape name is. So if I just type in the name box ANT underscore 1 it's going to highlight the shape that I've drawn. Now I've made the shape have no border and no fill, that's why it's invisible. But you can see that the frame that it sits inside now. If I pick an injury severity, grade 1, grade 2 or grade 3, that's going to fire off a piece of code that's going to colour that circle. Let's have a look. Could change it to grade 3. Could choose a different option, grade 1, grade 3. So what's happening is that when we're selecting from the drop-down box, a change event is occurring. Something in the spreadsheet has changed. The code runs, finds that we've selected grade 3 for left calf, and it uses the method we just saw before, shading a shape, and it chooses red because it's grade 3, blue, grade 1, and so on. Or I can clear it out and start again. We could extend that further on the following example. These are combined stats for a large group of athletes across two years. What our code's looking at is whether or not there's been a change from 2015 to 2016. If there's been no change, the circle is coloured blue. If it's got worse in 2016 than it did in 2015, the circle is shaded red. And if it is better, it is shaded gold. So why don't I make some modifications to this data? So we've now made three changes that will change three circles to show that things are now better in 2016 than they were in 2015. If we click this button, it's going to run and we can see that some of those circles change colours. Let's change um, the right shoulder, which currently says 15. Let's make it the same as last year, and that now colours blue. Now you can see the screen flickering slightly. That's because the code is looping through all of these circles, and there's about 25 of them, which is why it takes a second or so. It's looping through all of them and checking if it's better or worse or the same as last year, and it's therefore just colouring the circle based upon a criteria. We didn't look at it for the last sheet, but let's look at the code this time and see what it looks like. If I expand this VB editor window out, we can see that we've got four modules. Each of these modules is just a place to write code. So I've got a separate module that I wrote for the intro, a module for the body of a single athlete, which is what we looked at a second ago, and this one here, where we're looping through all the injury stats. 
Here you can see the main part of it. Firstly, there's the decision criteria. If the change is 1, then it's the same and it should be colored blue. And there's the RGB codes, 0176240. If it's better than, this is the colors for gold. If it's worse, that's the colors for red. And for each row in that data table, we need to apply this piece of code. We need to select the correct shape and apply the four color using the RGB variable that we've written up here above. The last example was slightly different. It's for a performance analysis concept. You've collected some data and you want to present a really simple image to the team about how the match went. You've got a few basic measures such as position, passes, territory, corners, chances, shots and goals. And you've got those variables for a home and away team. So all I have done, the field is a simple image that I copied from Google and I placed upon it a bunch of rectangles. I made those rectangles transparent and I linked the text inside those rectangles to a cell. Just a quick demonstration of how that might work. Insert a rectangle. I'm going to put it here for now. With the rectangle selected, click in the formula bar, type the equal sign, and click on a cell that has some text in it. That text now appears in the shape, and if I update it, the shape text will directly link and also update. Just going to get rid of that for now. So we have a bunch of shapes that are populating each of these items from the data in, in column E. And so if I run the code, what we're going to see is that shots were the same, and so the box is blue. But for the team that got the better performance in corners or position or territory, that box goes red. And if you did worse than your opponent, the box goes gold. So you can change whatever color you like. I just randomly chose those, and we can reset those back. What I also did in this particular example is not only did I color the shape on the diagram, I also colored the cells that are directly linking to these text boxes. Not for any reason other than to demonstrate that the code we used in our intro can be applied to an example such as this. If we go to the code and have a look at it, it's in the module called Pitch. And what we've done is we've created a loop. Our data can be found in rows 6 to row 19. And so we can see we've got a loop that goes from row 6 to 19. And for each iteration of the loop, it's going through and identifying whether or not the particular item is better, worse, or the same as the opposition. When it determines that, it assigns an RGB color, as we can see here, outcome 1, outcome 3, outcome 2. And then finally, it applies the colors to the range and then colors the cells using those RGB colors. It then goes to the next row in the data set. In an effort to show you what's happening, I'm going to show you a little trick that's very important when you're learning how to code. And that is that you can click inside this margin and create a break. And I have arranged the screens now so that we can see what's happening as it's happening. So if I'm clicking inside the code and I click run reset, it's all clear. Now I can start again and run the code. But what it's going to do is it's going to stop each time it gets to this particular line. 
the yellow line that's highlighted is telling us that this is the next line of code that's going to run. And on my Windows keyboard I can hit the F8 key to loop through. So, if I hover over Outcome, it's going to give us a 1, 2 or a 3. And now we can see that the if criteria underneath is saying if outcome equals 1, then it's the same and should be coloured blue. Because that's not true, it's going to skip directly to the next if. Is the outcome equal 3? Yes, it is. So it's going to execute those next three lines of code. Is it 2? No, it's not. So it's going to skip to the end of that. Now it's going to select the shape. We can see that the box has now been selected on the screen. And it's now been coloured. Now the cell will also be coloured. And it's going to go back to the top and start again. So we'll have one more look quickly. That one's also gold, and so on and so on and so on. So if we hover over I, we can see that it's now currently at row 8. Outcome again is 3. The stat is called Home Territory. And it's now just programming in all the different variables that we use in the last parts of code that do the colouring. If I hit F5, it's going to keep going until it hits the roadblock again. So here we can see it's doing one at a time. And it'll keep going until it gets to 19 and then finish. Click again to take that roadblock away, maximize my screen, and blow it back up again. So if you're interested in a copy of this file so that you can get in amongst and check it out, then feel free to email me at this address. But if you're trying to think of applications for this, just remember that both the pitch and this body diagram are just images that I found online, and I then literally inserted a shape, placed it over the body area in this case, before doing anything to this, I'm just going to call it New Shape Example. So now I can refer to it and find it if I need to. By clicking on Format Shape, I can say that it's got no fill and no border, which effectively means it's disappeared. But it does mean because we've got its name, that I can refer to it in code and colour it and shade it and move it and resize it any way I like by simply interacting with its properties using the VBA editor. I hope this trick was useful. Thanks for stopping and listening and I'll see you next time.